evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Amur in Russia. Now as you can kind of tell from this map, we are very far from the heart of cultural Russia, which is way over there. We are over in eastern Russia, in the more Asian parts of Russia, I guess you could call it. This is China right here, so imagine kind of that kind of culture, but Russian. It's kind of like that. Amur is a very, very beautiful place on this planet. This oblast is named after the Amur River, which makes up this border here. One of the world's longest rivers, I think it's the 10th longest river in the world. But there's many, many other major rivers that crisscross the area here. It's kind of hard to read, it already points them out. Um, the Zaya River is right here, right? All very important to life in Amur. As um, all these little towns you see here are mainly but the majority of the landscape here is very thickly forested with lots of beautiful, beautiful, diverse wildlife. Some of the most diverse wildlife, not just in like Russia and Siberia, but in Eastern Asia. It's where we get the Amur tiger and the Amur leopard, two of the rarest cats in the world, very almost nearly extinct, especially the Elmer leopard, because they have such beautiful thick coats. But um, lots of other wonderful creatures live here as well. Strangely enough, you don't really think of Russia and conservation, but Russia is doing way more on this side of the Elmer than China is doing on this side, in terms of preserving the wildlife in this forested area here. So that's good at least that you know, there, are, there are many protections in place, but most of them are on the Russian side. The capital, I think it would be, of the oblast is this town here, which is a mouthful. I believe it's Blagovinsk. Blagovinsk. <laughs> really fun to say, but uh, a little bit of a tongue twister in English. Black off It's fun. Right on the Amur River. Right where the Zaya meets the Amur. And uh, we'll talk more about the modern landscape of Amur because it's very closely tied to its history in the past 60, 70 years or so. So let's get into the history of this region. It's another one of those places that I could go into full detail, or I could give you the cliff notes. I'm gonna give you the cliff notes, but um, the ancient cultures that lived here go way back. They are um, little tribes of mainly people descended from the Chinese, later descended from the various Mongol tribes all mishmashed together in their own cultures here. But for a long time, since the Tang Dynasty, way long ago, they've mainly been paying tribute to China, or what we now consider China, the various dynasties of China. Until in the year 1640, when the area was conquered by the Manchus. The Manchus live up here in what's known as Manchuria, in northern, northern, northern China. Eventually, the Manchus would gain enough power that they would be the heads of the Qing dynasty. And the last emperors of China were Manchu emperors. But before that would happen, before the emperors would be overthrown, this area was given over to Russia in the year 1858. It was annexed by Russia as per a treaty 
in which Russia really, really wanted a Pacific coastline. So they reasoned with China to draw these borders because it's mostly wilderness anyway. It's hard to delineate borders other than places like the Elmer River. So essentially it was a treaty to draw up lines separating Russia from China and lo and behold, Russia got to have this chunk here and the Kamchatka Peninsula up there. Got those from China so that they could have a seacoast and seaports. But they got Elmer in the deal as well. Just kind of came this is when many Russians started to immigrate into the area to um, kind of escape the typical Russian lifestyle and go live in the woods and build homesteads and farms there along the rivers and beautiful mountainsides. Which doesn't sound all too bad, to be honest. It perked up even more once the Trans-Siberian Railroad ran through Almer to reach the seaport of Vladivostok, which you can't see, it's just down here to reach the coast there. So that brought many more people to the region because it's along the longest railway in the world. The longest consecutive long railway in the world. There was a moment when the Russian Empire collapsed and the country devolved into a long civil war that this region got its own independence for a bit. By this region, I mean all of this year all of the eastern area. They called it the Far Eastern Republic, and it lasted from 1920 to 1922 when they joined the USSR and have been a part of Russia ever since. Amur became its own oblast in 1948. And this is when industry really started to pick up in the region. After World War II, they decided to use Amur, by they, they, I mean the Soviets. The Soviets decided to use Amur for a couple of things, mainly for hydroelectricity. All of these rivers that flow through here generate pretty much all of the electricity in these urban forested zones here in the far east of Russia. Lots and lots of energy flowing through Amur. It also became a big farming area, mainly in soybeans. Nowadays, they produce so many soybeans that they export them over to China. I, like, I don't know, you think soybeans in China go hand in hand, but Amur apparently grows a lot of soybeans. There's also a lot of mining that happens in Amur. Of course, when you have all these mountains and waterways, you get natural minerals. It's mainly gold, and coal, among many other things, but those are the major ones. So yeah, when I would point out geographic features, I would say lots of hydroelectric dams and lots of farmland here in the, in the little centers there along the rivers. But there's one other industry that Amur is kind of infamous for nowadays, and that is in this town of, let me look at it, I didn't write it down, I have to read the map, Uglenoya, Uglenoya, and it goes all the way back to the history of the USSR in Kazakhstan, because as we know on my channel, most of Kazakhstan is nothing, it is empty step as far as the eye can see, and the Soviets built the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the middle of the nothing in Kazakhstan. Of course, now it's a thriving town and all that, but um, at the time, that was where their secret space projects happened, from um, Laika the Dog, Yuri Gagarin, um, Sputnik was launched there, all of the infamous Soviet space stories happened at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in what's now Kazakhstan. But eventually the Soviet Union would collapse, and Kazakhstan became its own thing in 1991. Unlike other parts of the USSR, Kazakhstan and the new Russian Federation got along. It helps when you have a, a Soviet crony as your president, the new country. So, 
the Russian Federation is like, you know what, we've collapsed, you can have your own country, you're just Kazakhstan now, you're not the KSSR anymore. Um, but, but, um, can, can we please, can we have the spaceport? <laughs> please, please, can we have the spaceport? Kazakhstan was like, mm, maybe. Russia says, here's a deal. We get to use the spaceport, it's Russian territory, until 2050. And they said deal. So as of now, the Baikonur Cosmodrome is still owned and operated by Russia. Although the actual people running it are Cossacks, right? So, in 2010, Putin, over here in Russia, is like, well, the clock is ticking on the Baikonur Cosmodrome. We've got, what is it, 40 years. We need a new one. So they picked this town in Ulmer to be the new space center for Russia. It officially launched in 2016. It's called the Vostochny Cosmodrome. Most of the space projects, the man flights, um, the cosmonauts, uh, still fly out of the Baikonur Cosmodrome, but slowly but surely, the Russian space industry is moving here to Almer, which is pretty neat. In a couple decades, hopefully, we'll have cool stories about cosmonauts having adventures up in space, launching from Almer. Amr was recently in the news, as of less than a month of me filming this, back in August 2023, September 2023, I think it was early September 2023, when Kim Jong-un, over in North Korea, which is just down there, came to visit his buddy Putin, and they met at the Vostochny Cosmodrome. Oh my gosh, it has it on the map here, I didn't even see that. Vostochny Cosmodrome, I didn't even see that before, there it is. They met there and took publicity photos of them walking around and looking at things and um, being very important to each other. <laughs> so, and making obviously secret deals behind closed doors, right? Very infamous for those two men to do that, particularly together. So if you saw any of that in the news recently, that happened in Omer. That being said, let me grab the tablet. I'm obviously not pro-Putin or pro-Kim. Um, one, I'm an American. <laughs> and two, um, you know, I think there's a way to appreciate places of the world um, without appreciating the people who run the country. I believe all countries are good countries. There are no bad countries. There are only bad leaders. Just Russia's had the unfortunate circumstance of only having bad leaders since the 1600s. Poor Russia. Where should we start? Let's head down to Bolovkoz. Plus, plus, plus. It's not popping up. <laughs> Where is it? Am I too far south? No, I'm not. Hello? This is it. How weird. There we go. Blood Gold Vegetinsk. I was like, did they change the name recently? And I didn't know. Look at that. If that doesn't scream Soviet, I don't know what does. Look at this distinguished gentleman there. Who is that? That looks like Franz Joseph, the Austrians, but it can't be. Yeah, very typically Soviet. It looks like this good doggo gets his nose rubbed for luck. <laughs> That's funny. Well, from above from an airplane. Beautiful foliage. Oh, look at look at the architecture on this. How distinct. 1891. You can tell this is not modern in any aspect. Um, very, very like traditional traditional Russian. Like, this makes me think of, like, Russian dolls. Um, but with that kind of Mongol flair to it, this is a lot more modern Russia. Like, Russian Empire style. And then Soviet architecture. Look at the train. The train's pulling through the little black park. And the snow and the interior. That's beautiful. 
like a shopping center. It's such a lovely object. It's a cool statue. Kind of looks like Lenin. I think that is Lenin. Why would they still have a Lenin statue? I don't know, but maybe it's just kind of always been there. I can't read Cyrillic, but I wonder if that's Cyril and Methodius. I'm not sure. That's a Piccadilly Circus. That's Eros. That's pretty cool. Oh, what a beautiful church. Russian Orthodox churches. They always look like desserts. They look edible and delicious. So you can see the big river here meeting the Alma River. You can see all the big farmlands on both sides. What's Uncle Sasha? Equestrian facility. Put horses here out in the countryside. That's pretty. Oh, we're getting kisses. That's pretty. So yeah, there's not many slideshows. I mean, you can find slideshows of the towns. Let's look at this place. It's in Cyrillic. I can't read it. Oh, but it doesn't have pictures. Kind of the theme of this week. Trotsky. Here we go. Trotsky town. See little pictures there. Some Orthodox priests. So yeah, not very many pictures. Some of them are okay, but to kind of get like the the concept of this region, it's kind of hard to find because it's all very beautiful and wild for the most part. Little villages and towns here and there. But let's look at. Oh wait, what's that? State nature reserve. This is what I'm. Beautiful landscapes. Look at how far these hills roll and stretch, covered in green snow. Little lodge there. That looks fun. Big rivers and lakes. Beautiful woods. You could stay in a teepee. Big cypress tree. All kinds of deciduous trees. Look at beautiful wetlands here. You can catch some fishies. You can read the signs. Beautiful, beautiful landscape of this region. That's a good slideshow. Over here at the reservoir, it looks like. One of those hydroelectric regions, probably. You can find the dam. Not quite, but look at all this marshy wetland from it. That's pretty cool. There's some other nature reserve. Norsky. It's like, I could either show you slideshows of little towns where there's either no pictures or just pictures of little buildings. Or I could show you the stunning landscape. Oh, I love this. Where while it's very beautiful, I can only look at the same kinds of trees for so long. Looks like these guys had an epic fishing trip here in this nature reserve along the river. reorient myself to find the space station. Let's see if I can find it without cheating and typing it in. I guess I could just look at the map. <laughs> Google Clues. Here it is. You can see it from here. So here's the town of Ugorsk. Which I wonder if this was built for the space station, because it looks like a lot of it is still under construction if Ugogorsk was made for the employees to live at. You can see the row houses here, the apartments. The sports complex, it's like a town where you have everything you want. What do you think this is? Whoa. It's a landing pod. It's pretty cool. It's a little space museum. A little Soyuz air stuff. Some space snacks. Old satellite. I love looking at space stuff. I love looking at things that were in space and are now back home. Like you can get pizza. Old spacesuit there with the Soyuz logo. You see, it's the only thing I can read in <laughs> Cyrillic is the word Russian. She's doing her belly stretches. Those aren't belly stretches, but she's definitely dressed right. She's being silly. 
How cool is that? There's somebody important. More little diagrams of what the Russians have floating up around space, probably. And look, a little children's planet there, made out of yarn and little things. <laughs> Cute. Little crafts. I love museum bookshops. You can find the cool stuff. That's neat. They have their own little space museum. We have the airport here, and then up here is the actual space center, which you can see is not terribly impressive. It is open and ready to go. I assume this is the launch area here. Maybe over here as well, right there. Is that a rocket? I can't tell. But a space center nonetheless. It's really neat, I think. Oh, there's another nature reserve. Let me look at that while I close out this video. The Orlovsky State Nature Reserve. Oh, I love the mist. But anyway, whoa, there's a big old fire happening. Oh dear. I wonder if that's not mist. I wonder if that's smoke. Oh dear. Maybe. Oh, that's the one we looked at already. Well, what should we look at while we close this out? Gotta stay in the find another town slideshow. Let's look at Dubovka. Nope. Let's look at this place. Nope. <laughs> Let's look at Rom. Alright. Rom. Those little statues. How oh, pretty. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. As this is an ongoing series on my channel. Oh wow, there's Lenin. Next, we are heading over to good old Yemen. Oh, that's gorgeous. All covered in snow. Yemen. We've gone to Yemen so many times on my channel. We're going back, I think, for the last time this year. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a good, good, good,